we slept and we slumbered. Lord, Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for your plan, your mercy, your grace, the love that you bestowed upon us, Lord God. And Lord, Father, we thank you for this morning, allowing us to be in position, in the place, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Father, for allowing us to be able to come into your presence, Lord Father God. Thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to open doors so you can come in and sup with us. And Lord Father, thank you, Lord God for our daily work, Lord God, and our daily assignments, Lord Father, that you have given us. Lord Father, we thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to be able to stand before you, Lord God. Lord God, as workers, Lord God, as intercessors, Lord Father, watchmen on the wall, Lord God, to place the burdens and issues and concerns at your feet, Lord Father. And Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding and the discernment you have given us, Lord Father. And, Lord God, today, if there's any sin, any goal, Lord God, anything that was amiss, Lord Father God, if there's anything, Lord Father, that is not like you, that you are, are not pleased with, Lord God, we ask you right now, Lord God, to remove it, Lord God. We repent right now in the name of Jesus. And, Lord Father, we surrender to you, Lord God, giving up all things, Lord God, that you, Lord God, may be in competence. You may be a part of us, Lord Father, that you may be in us, Lord God, and we dwell with you. And, Lord Father, Lord God, as I die to myself, Lord Father, you arise in me. Lord God, you take over, you take control. Lord God, allow, Lord Father, the words that will come forth, Lord God, to be edifying for the body, mind, heart, and soul, and spirit, for the practical application of the daily life, Lord Father God. And after the word, Lord Father, allow, Lord Father, us to be nourished and energized, Lord God, for the work. And, Father, we bless you. We give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. Amen. Thank you, intercessors, for joining me on this morning. I tell you, this week has been a very interesting week for me. It's been, I have to say, um, somewhat of a battle. But it's all been good. It has all been for growth. And I thank God that you have allowed me to be able to grow. He's allowed me to be able to see myself. He's allowed me to, you know, sad to say, smell the underarm a little bit. And then to tell you, I had to get some things in order. Amen. But with that, Amen. the promises of God never fail. So the promises of God are always real. The promises of God are the things that we have to remind ourselves of when things are going awry, when strange stuff happens. Well, sometimes things in our life can go so well till we forget that, you know, the enemy is lurking. And we can't let our guard down. Amen. And so we have to remember when we're going through, when we're doing, dealing with anything, we have to remember the promises of God. So we're going to start off, and I spoke about this a while back, but it, it comes to mind again. And so we want to bring ourselves into remembrance. It says, you know, we have to bring things into remembrance. He'll bring stuff to remembrance, amen? But we also have to bring it to each other. So we're going to start in um, Second Peter, praise God. For those who have your Bible, and we're going to start with the chapter 1, fourth verse. And actually, we're going to go and start at uh, verse 2, I do believe. Heck, might as well go straight up to the first verse. Might as well knock it all off. Praise God. It says, Simon Peter, the servant, and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of Jesus and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertaineth unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory 
and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promise, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to your virtue knowledge, and to your knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity, for this is to be in you and abound. They may that they make you that ye shall, Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of your Lord Jesus Christ. But that for he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and have gotten that he was purged, and he has forgotten that he was purged from his old sin. I'm going to stop right there for a minute. And as we were reading, as I'm reading, and I was reading earlier, and plenty of times before, it says that he's given us exceeding great and precious promises. That we might, that since we're partakers, that he'll make us partakers of the vineyard, of the, of the vineyard of nature, the divine nature, of God's divine nature, having escaped corruption that is in the world through lust. So now he's letting us know we are already coming into Christ and we become partakers of the divine nature. One of the promises, you're going to be a partaker of the divine nature. And how is that? Through the knowledge. What is the knowledge? The knowledge of the word, the knowledge of God. The knowledge of Christ and how he, in other words, the studying, the show thyself approved, the knowledge that you receive. So through the knowledge, you become the partaker of the divine nature. When we read, we are partakers of the divine nature of God, the divine nature of Christ. We are seeing and and, and partaking of the things that they are and what they have done and, and, and experiencing the thought processes, the concepts, the love, the, the nature, the heart of who God is and who Christ is. So we are partakers of that. And then it says, besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith. He says, in all diligence, add your faith, add virtue. You want to add virtue to your faith. So that means your faith is tangible enough to add some things to it. You have to build on it, increase it, strengthen it. Through the word, it says, faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God, right? So, mm -hmm. to your faith, virtue, you have to add virtue. And to your virtue, knowledge. And that's interesting that we are partakers of the divine nature and 
the way we're able to partake of it, of course, we pray and we enter into a place that is holy when we pray, especially when we're going with people, when you're in your quiet space, <coughs> excuse me, and it's nothing but you and God, and you're seeking Him. Sometimes even when you're reading your scriptures you and, and look like you put under a deep sleep, And then all of a sudden, the Lord reveals things to you. You even see, sometimes you see Christ on Sunday. Some days, some people say, I've seen Christ sit at the foot of my bed or enter into my room or he came into the house. I've had an experience, an encounter with the Lord. All the divine nature. Not just the experience, but when you're in the presence, you are experiencing the divine nature of God, the divine nature of Christ. When we open our Bibles and we, we read the Word, and we're serious about reading the Word, and, and we are going through and the Word is speaking to us, and, and the questions we may not even speak with our mouths, but in our head and in our mind, all of a sudden, the, the scriptures answer those questions without us speaking them. We're in the divine nature of, them, of God and of Christ. And it says that to virtue knowledge, the good heart, the kind heart, the, the diligence, you're going to add knowledge. And knowledge, you're going to put in temperance, that tolerance. Because now you understand. You have a knowledge that says, okay, when somebody acts out, guess what? Oh, okay, I can see past the physical into the spiritual and see that there is something going on with that person that is not of flesh, but spiritual. When there's conflict, we know it's spiritual because we, we don't fight against flesh and blood. But we fight against principalities, rules of darkness, and a wickedness, right? We, we, we fight against things that are spiritual. So we have to have that temperance, that tolerance, that temperance, to be able to not be quick to move on the earthly flesh, but to govern quickly, be able to discern quickly, to, to not move when we should be able to see past that person so we can address the issue or that, that spirit that is causing the person to be in that certain way or deal, or, or deal in a certain way. Amen. And with that patience, because we know sometimes we can get impatient with people because they done disturbed us. They done did this. They taking up too much of our time. They this, that, and the third. Oh, my God. They just keep calling. Oh, my God. They just like to talk a lot. Oh, my God. They talk during the movie. Oh, my goodness. Um, they never get gas when they're supposed to. <laughs> All these different things and whatever it may be. Oh, my goodness. Somebody you mean to tell me they don't know how to sign in on the timesheet yet? And they've been doing this how long? And we get impatient. Now I understand it may be our time and our place to teach or to pray or to intercede or to just give a kind word. And into patience, godliness. And I said, Lord, that's interesting because patience, boy, I tell you, that's about as close to godliness as you can get look like to me. But then he says godliness. In other words, 
even with the tolerance of patience, because I'm, I've been patient with them, but they still have that attitude. They still have that frustration. They still have that the type of ugh residue left on it. You know, they they it, it's all clean and smooth, but then all of a sudden there's a little bit of dust and dirt, you know, kind of on the side. It has to be pure and honest. It has to be a heart that is clear of issues, that godliness. And then the godliness has the brotherly kindness. Wow, hold on. We got the godliness first. And brother, I thought the brotherly kindness would have came from. No, because without godliness, you can't even have brotherly kindness. Brother, let me teach you, brother. You're going the wrong way, brother. Awesome job, brother. I was thinking about you today, brother. Sister, same thing. Brother, you know, that wasn't the right way to do it. But here, let us pray about it. Hey, brother, I saw such and such and such and such and such. Here, let me let me help you. You know, you on my mind today. The Lord told me to stop by the grocery store and buy double. The Lord said, give it to you. And then Brother Kindness, charity. Hmm. I thought about charity and Charity encompasses a lot of different things. It encompasses all these things so far that we spoke of. But charity is one of those things where no matter how you feel, no matter whether you're busy or you sacrifice in obedience to serve, to do, and to give. And you do it with patience. You do it with diligence. You do it with faith and virtue. You do it with knowledge and temperance. You do it with brotherly kindness. You do it with godliness. And I thought about this. I said, Lord, wow. That's why I say the greater of these is charity. It's okay. I'm, I'm getting to understand. Because charity encompasses all these things. So if you're saying you're being charitable and you're missing one of these things, then your charity is not true. Charity is a miss. And then the verse 8, it says, if these things be in you and abound, in other words, in you and around you, they make you that ye shall neither be barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of your Lord Jesus Christ. Now, how plain and simple can that be? It said you will not be barren. In other words, you will not be stripped bare. You will not be lacking in nothing. even to the point people will give unto your bosom. And they don't understand why. You don't even understand why. You will like nothing, nor unfruitful. So that means you will be producing something. That means that you will have product. You will have results. And your results will be multiplied. That your work of your hands will produce good. You will not be unfruitful. You will not look like you're blessed and then your life is unblessed. You understand? You won't look like the fig tree that, that Christ uh, condemned and cursed. You won't look. You won't have to fake it until you make it, because it would already be made 
You understand? It won't be just appearance, but it'll be true. You you will be blessed. You will have the fruit of your labor. You will be able to show it, and it will be good fruit. You'll be fruitful. See, so you'll be fruitful in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. That means you will expound in his word, expound in how he moved, expound in the fact that we're supposed to be watchmen on the wall. The fact that the same things he did, we can do. The same miracles he performed, we can perform. The same thing. The knowledge of Jesus Christ. In other words, we will know what he knows. Because we would be able to be taught. The Holy Spirit will speak to us. It will teach us. Along with what the Word says, along with what the Scriptures are telling us, our hearts will be able to understand it. And we will be able to apply it to our lives. Not just hear it, but to apply it to our lives. We won't be barren. You know how the desert is. It can rain 40 days and 40 nights and nothing to pop up. Because it don't have no good seed in it. But then all of a sudden there are areas in the desert where it can rain just a little. And all of a sudden it's a patch of greenery flowing and upspringing. You even may see some blooms and some things there. And you may find a bird or two landing on his way to wherever he's going. That's how we should be fruitful, plentiful in the word of God and in the actions of Christ. Doing the will of God. Amen. Amen. So now when we go back to well actually when we go back we'll go continue down, not go back to, but go continue to go down, it says that in verse 9 it says, but ye lack it, these things is blind. So if you lack these things, you're blind. And cannot see afar off. And I was, you know, and I read that a couple of times and I've seen it in different ways. But for some reason this morning, it applied to the intercessor. If we are watchmen on the wall, we cannot afford to be blind. We can't afford not to see things far off. Amen. Amen. This morning, I'm being transparent. I tried to be a big girl and thought I could do this stuff by myself today. And, you know, because I thought I had the right passwords and stuff for, for the laptop and couldn't get on. And I waited to the very last minute to call Chantel, I didn't want to call. I ain't going to tell no story. I didn't want to call my sister. I wasn't trying to wake up. I could do it. I know I got this. I can do this. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Y'all have to understand. I don't mind telling on myself. But <laughs> and she asked me, she said, well, how can you call me early for this? And I just told her I thought I could handle it. And I did. Needless to say, I still ain't got into the thing, but we'll work that out, amen, so it won't be a miss on the morning and on tomorrow, amen. But sometimes, because we're so busy in certain things, and sometimes we feel like we got it, because, you know, we're trying not to do some stuff, and I don't have to bother them, I can do it, we done did it before, and da 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 And I still needed my sister's help. And she just calmly, yeah, she, she kind of chastised a little bit, but she calmly got up and did, and said, hey, folks, on the line, now go on and get on the line, now you know, da da da, da. amen. <laughs> and I felt the way, felt like a kid. I can do that. I could have did it, you know. But thank God for her patience with me. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. 
that's that brotherly kindness or that sisterly kindness and that temperance and that patience. And it's so interesting. The Lord gave me that to <laughs> discuss because, of course, it applied to me. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. And because I was just so confident, I just knew it. I'm going to get it. And I had the right stuff. Didn't make sure because sometimes, you know, we have to understand about preparation. We have to prepare and make sure that everything is correct. Dot the I's and cross the T's. And I didn't do it. So my passwords wasn't right. The this, that wasn't right. Amen. So true enough, I was blind and couldn't see. <laughs> Praise God. So we lacking anything. Because I like the information, right? So I couldn't get on the line on time. To deliver the word the Lord gave me. Amen. Amen. He says, the lack of these things is blind and cannot see afar off. And as intercessors, we have to be able to see afar off. We have to be able to see the enemy coming at a great distance because if we don't see him until he gets there, guess what? It leaves the perimeter vulnerable. It causes things to take place that we could have prevented. Even he's allowed to sometimes create a breach, put a hole in the wall and we have to go repair it. And put a hole in the wall, so, you know, just like, I hate to say it, like them critters, them brown doom buggies. I call them brown doom buggies, roaches. They don't take much for them. They don't need a great big space. Just a sliver, and they can get in. House may be clean, but they get in anyway. They show up because there is a breach. There's a way in. So we want to be able to see far off. We want to be able to not be blind. We want to be able to see. And then he says, you can't see far off and have forgotten that we were purged from his old sin. So how many times have we forgotten that God saved us from something? We say, don't want me to go back in there now, do you? you don't want me? And we're not realizing we're saying we're returning back to sin. We're willing to give up our newness for an old garment that is tattered, torn, worn, no good, out of, out, not even the right size, just for a temporary moment. We won't take off our new earrings to go slap on some 10-year, 20-year-old Vaseline. <laughs> you understand? You know how you do put Vaseline on your face when you were fighting? Remember back in the day when they used to do stuff like that? Amen. Amen. But we can't afford to do that. We can't afford to forget that he purged us. We can't forget his promises. When we're going through, we cannot forget that he is our redeemer. We cannot forget what his, his desire is for us to have life and life more abundantly. His desire for us is to give him glory. His desire for us is to care for others, to love others as we love ourselves, we, he, he desires us to love each other with a godly love. He desires for us to seek after the, to, to, to seek and take care of the weak. He desires for us to take care of the widow. He, he wants us to have charity. He wants us to have a relationship with him. He wants us. He wants us for himself. 
He wants him. He wants us all for himself. He wants us. Because he created us for his vanity. He created us to worship him. And he doesn't want us in sin. Amen? Amen. He doesn't want us to be devoured by the prince of the air. Amen. So he's given us things to, to, to tangibly do. He gives us things to believe in. He gives us the truth about things that safeguard us. He gives us the things and the tools and the means of protection. He gives us the tools and the means to be fruitful and to multiply. And we ain't always talking about babies. You know, most people think be fruitful and multiply means babies. It means a lot more than that. He gives us the tools. He said, I've given you power. The power are tools. The tools are the things that we're supposed to be doing as far as dealing with the word. Doing the things that he tells us to do with our hands. He tells us to tend to our own business. He's given us the power. And we claim we're poor, we this. we got to struggle for this. We this and that. And that's nothing of what God says we're supposed to be doing. He says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Nothing God asks us to do is hard. Even waking up at 5.30 a.m. It's not hard. It's not a hardship. It is not a problem. It is not detrimental to your health in a negative way. And we have to come with the heart and the mindset that it's not. When we say, oh, I'm just too tired, that lets you know that you can't say I'm too tired. Oh, I'm just tired. Because now you're saying God's word is not beneficial for you. God's word can't do nothing for you. That only sleep can give it to you and only this can give you. And yes, sleep is good. He's a little sleep, a little slumber. And a little folding of the hands. Amen. But we have to know to be diligent. Verse 10, it says, Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling the election and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. Diligence. You got to be diligent in your calling. Diligent to what the Lord has assigned you to. Diligence, even for the things that the Lord has put on your heart to do, you have to be diligent. Even in the business, and I'm going to be honest with you, some days I feel like there's nothing going on. Oh, my goodness. And I don't want to tend to Greeters International. But when I remember the word, I have to do at least one little something. If not two or three, four, five, but once I do the one, all of a sudden other things start to happen and take place. Praise God. The vision that the Lord gives me, I have to start putting my hand to the power, doing a little bit of something each day. To make sure I'm working on the vision that God gave me. I have to do a little bit of something each day to make sure I'm in good relationship with the Lord. So that when I do those little things, they will be fruitful. I have to understand that everything is for a purpose and what he's given me is for someone else to be blessed by. So today I challenge you. I challenge you to remember the promises of God. Remember the promises, First Peter. Remember the things that how we're supposed to be. Because we're dealing with self. We're not dealing with the promises of how he's going to do some, for somebody else on our behalf. No, we're talking about how we're supposed to be so we can have these things to make our election sure so that we don't fall. Because if we're the workers in the vineyard, if we're the front line and the back line, we cannot afford to fall. We can't afford to eat dirt. (laughs) 
can't afford to have our face in the ground, amen, unless we lay down ourselves to get a seed and call out and cry out to God. Other than that, we cannot fall. We shouldn't fall. So I challenge you. And continue to read Second Peter chapter 1. And let the Lord speak to you. We have to remind each other. We have to be accountability partners in a sense, but we have to be brothers and brethren to remind each other of the promise, remind each other of the goodness of the Lord, to remind each other of who God is and remind each other of how we're supposed to be in Christ Jesus. We're supposed to remind each other to look out for each other. You know when a mother tells a child, look out for your brother, your sister. Hold a hand. Don't let nobody bother your little one, the littlest brother, the littlest sister. Those things. It don't have to be littlest. It just be the fact we need to take care of each other, look out for each other, strengthen each other, build each other, and sometimes even correct someone. Correct each other. Because if we don't, Blood will be on our hands if they fall, and God forbid, they're gone. We have to show that cat is charity. Because we're putting ourselves out there because you don't know how a person will respond. But praise God, the Lord said that's where we're supposed to be in that position of charity, along with all the others, of virtue and faith, temperance, patience, godliness, brotherly love. So I challenge you today, read the promises, know them and live them. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you. Thank you for the word. Thank you, Lord Father God, for keeping us and guiding us. Thank you, Lord Father God, for being you. Thank you, Lord God, for your love. Thank you for your teaching, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Father, for no one can teach like you can. And Lord Father, I pray that if there's anyone that is in lack, if someone, Lord God, that doesn't have the full charity today, if there's someone, Lord Father God, that may have forgotten some things, help us, Lord Father. Bring it to memory. Lord God, Take the barren places, Lord Father, and make an increase that there would be no lack. And Lord Father, there's a place where we're being unfruitful, Lord Father. Lord God, on today, for those that are listening to this recording, for those that are on the line, for those, Lord Father, that even if not in the ear, would not hear this message. But Lord God, for whoever it is, Lord God, that is unfruitful, but know you, Lord Father, you heal them. Allow them to be producers of good fruit. Give them the knowledge and understanding that they need. Open their eyes to see, Lord Father. Open their ears to hear God, that they may receive, Lord Father, all that they need, Lord God. Send a brother or a sister in, Lord God, their way. Hallelujah, that will help, Lord God, that will bring the word, that will bring them out of the unfruitfulness and the barrenness, Lord God, that they're in. Use your people, Lord God. And, Lord, Father, we thank you. We give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. Amen and amen. Are there any questions, comments? Did the word bless you? This is our time to share. Amen. Amen.